In a previous video, I showed that our software is able to simulate AC losses of a superconductor. In this video, I'll demonstrate how we can simulate quenching of a superconducting tape. So first we have to create a new project and we'll con construct the layers only out of boxes. I'll quickly construct the geometry and then I'll show you how it looks like. Now we can take a look at our geometry. So we can see we have the stacked layers, we have copper substrate, then a very thin um, Repco layer and then again copper. And in the, mid in the middle I created a region where our quench will be initiated and so we can take track of values and average them over this middle region. As the next step we'll have to create and define the materials. So before defining um, the material properties, I quickly show you what the idea of the simulation is. So here you can see the critical current density distribution over the tape length, and uh, we can just have the same critical current density everywhere, or we can um, simulate a defect in the middle of the tape to initiate our quench, and this defect um, means that the critical current density is lower in the middle of the tape and will sweep over that uh, contrast. Now we get back to the materials and we will define uh, the material properties. So now we can go ahead and define our material properties and first some shared expressions which we'll use later. So we'll set the maximum current to 50 amperes. We can define our contrast value, which I just showed you first to 60% and then later we can sweep over it. We can define our critical current density as a Gaussian function depending on the x-coordinate of my tape, which is just the function that I showed you. And then we also want this critical current density to depend on the temperature, so I use a function that takes as argument temperature field, which is one of my, my outputs of the simulation in the end. And I'm gonna ramp uh, the critical current density down linearly depending on the temperature. For the material properties, I can take this interpolated function option. So for the thermal conductivity of substrate, I can upload a CSV file which then takes as argument the temperature and fits these values using splines. I will do the same for all the other properties that we'll need. So that were all the parameters that I can take from tables and now I have some fitted functions to experimental data. So for the heat capacity of my copper, I'm, I'm going to take a function that depends on the temperature. Also the same for the thermal conductivity of the copper. And I need some helper variable here just to make the construction not too complex. And the thermal conductivity of copper is not only depending on the temperature, but also on the residual resistivity ratio of copper. So we have two arguments here and you can see that we use our helper variable depending on the temperature. We can just call it like that as we defined it before. Now as a last expression, 
of function I need to define the power law. So the power law depends on two arguments, which is the temperature and J or current density. So we use this power law definition calling the critical current density as a function depending on the temperature and we use bounds to avoid numerical issues. Now we can continue defining our materials. So first we need air for the air box. Then we need copper. And here we have to change the properties to the ones we defined. So for the electric conductivity 10 to the power of 10. Then for the heat capacity we're gonna call the fitted function that we defined and for the thermal conductivity also. And for the um, residual resistivity ratio we use a value of 10. So we can just call it with 10. Then we need to define a new material for our substrate. The thermal conductivity, we need man magnetic permeability, the heat capacity, electric conductivity, and the density. and fill it in with, again, the values that we already uploaded. As a last material, we need Repco. I'm going to assign a different color so we can distinguish it from the substrate. And we again fill in our properties. We use this power law that we defined depending on temperature and the current density and also the interpolated functions. We still need to assign the volumes to the materials, so for the copper it's going to be Let's see it from the side, the upper layer, and then the bottom layer. For the substrate, it's going to be this middle region. And then the superconductor, this smaller region. So I just select those. Maybe zoom in a bit more and don't show the substrate. So yeah, now we can see them fine. So those three sections. Okay, so we already have in the regions our material regions and I'm gonna define some more regions that we'll use for the physics later. So first we're gonna define the circulation loop where our current is applied to in the end, which is just the skin of our tape. So that's surrounding here.
good. Then we have a domain where our temperature is fixed, which is at the both outer surfaces of our conducting regions. So those ones. And the same on the other side of the tape. We have a volume region, which is just all, all conducting regions. So we can select all volumes and then delete the air domain. And as a last region, I'm going to define a surface on which I want to keep track of my temperature and visualize it in the end. And that's going to be the surface of our superconducting layer, so this green layer, um, to visualize the temperature. And that avoids a lot of data because we only need to save this this temperature values on the surface and not in the whole in the whole domain or in the whole superconducting domain so for the physics i need magnetism h magnetism phi and the heat transfer they are all transient and the magnetism h is present in the conductive region Magnetism phi, also transient in the air region, and heat transfer in the conductive region too. <coughs> I'm gonna couple H and phi, then I'm gonna set my current source on the circulation loop, and to drive the simulation, I'm just gonna take a ramped current which ramps within 3 seconds to 1.5 times the maximum current. And for the heat transfer, I'm going to couple it with joule heating in the conductive region. And I'm going to take as a constraint the fixed temperature to 77 Kelvin on the surfaces. That's all that we need for the physics, and now we can continue to define our simulation. Alright, so as a last step, we're going to set up the simulation. We create a new simulation that is tr of type transient, enables all physics. We're going to use implicit Euler with an end time of 7 seconds and 50 milliseconds time, time steps. We're going to compute it on 50 nodes because we have around 1 million unknowns and with the DM composition that means 2000 unknowns per node and simulation will take around an hour I'm just gonna set the time out to two hours to make sure it completes within time for the mesh I'm gonna use the expert settings with a minimum size of 10 to the power of minus 6 maximum size of 10 to the power of minus 4 and a scale factor of 0 0.8 that's just some working mesh it can definitely be improved depending on the desired accuracy going to start creating the mesh and then I'm going to add the temperature as an output in the Repco layer and we can take a look at the auto-generated script and make some few changes here um, so first of all the mesh um, that we create and the ge geometry that we created is 10 times um, bigger in that direction than usually is so the layers are um, a bit thicker to make it easier to select and visualize it but now we can scale the obtained mesh um, by a factor 10 so here we can just scale it um, and by a factor 0 0.1 in Z direction. Then we're going to reduce the order in the phi and the temperature formulation. And we're going to set 
an initial temperature everywhere. So QS.select all selects all regions and we're gonna set an initial temperature of 77 Kelvin. Then I'm again putting some linearization terms for the magnetism H. So instead of taking this nonlinear um, thing, we're going to take the linearization for our Repco layer and then um, the usual one for the other two layers, so for copper and substrate, and uncomment this. Okay, and as a last step, I set the temperature field in like the whole Repco volume, but actually if we want to reduce data amount and we only want to um, visualize it on the surface, I can also use that region that I created, which is just on the surface of the Repco layer, which makes it a lot faster and the data amount um, a lot less. So we can save the script. And we have it set up now for the contrast of 60% um, in the middle of the tape, 60% of the critical current density. And that's what I want to sweep about. So I can, um, in the sweeps and overwrite, I can select the contrast expression. So for the sweep, we're going to define a linearly spaced vector from 60 to 100% in five steps. So we have 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100% um, of this contrast. And this will create five jobs with, with each of them running on 50 nodes. And the total computation time for all those configurations is only as long as the longest individual one takes. So you can compute different configurations with basically no increase in computational time. Um, you can run this simulation, which takes one hour for one million um, degrees of freedance and 140 time steps um, with these five configurations also finished after one hour. Okay, so the meshing succeed. We can take a look at our mesh. So you can see the mesh here. We can see the copper region, the substrate region, again copper, and then the superconducting region here. And as said, this will still be scaled in this Z direction by a factor of 0 0.1. Okay, so now we have everything ready and we can start our simulation. And this will automatically start five jobs with these five different configurations at the same time. So the simulation is finished now and we can quickly have a look at the results. So I extracted um, some properties and plotted them. In the beginning that's just the sweep that we saw and now I'll first show you the results from contrast of uh, 60%. So the average temperature in the layers, um, in the heater, that's like the middle region of the tape, it's the highest one, it rises um, when the current exceeds the critical current. And um, we can see that, yeah, also the temperature in the other layer rises, but in the middle it's like the most. Then we can also see that um, starting at that time, um, we have a current redistribution in the layer, so the superconductivity breaks. The Repco uh, layer has has a higher conduct uh, has a lower conductivity, higher resistivity, and therefore the current is redistributing also to the copper layer. So um, the current in the copper layer is rising; it's uh, a negative, so it's it's rising in the absolute value, and the Repco layer is um, falling in the absolute value. We can also actually see that our critical current is changing over time. That depend that that is um, due to the temperature rise, rise. So it's temperature dependent and therefore decays for higher temperatures. And the actual current um, is also decaying um, as we've seen above. 
and then finally the parameter sweep comparison we can see the average temperature in the heater in the middle region for different um, contrasts so we can see like the higher the contrast is um, the faster is my my temperature rise in the heater and now I'll also show you in the video how it looks like how temperature distributes okay so here in this video this is um, the tape in this the x directions or the tape length and that's showing the surface where we um, saved our temperature for so the surface of this of the repco layer over time and I start the simulation and then at some point we can see that in the middle we have a rise in temperature that is diffusing towards the outer sides and this rise is getting stronger by time. So the expected result.